Do you remember a time you were with friends or family and you couldn't decide on where to eat? Each of you probably had an idea, and it's not that you wouldn't make a decision, it's that there was no established path to make a decision. And each of you were being careful of the group, too much so, until the point of frustration set in because nothing was happening and one of you probably ended up saying, someone just make a decision already. <laughs> We've all been there before. Now, when your business team gets stuck in this predicament, it's a problem because you waste time, but more importantly, you defer to whoever takes the reins regardless of whether they have the right path for the group or not. From behavioral science, we know this as cascade effects, where in group discussion, group members will follow the statements and actions of those who speak or act first, even if those statements and actions lead the group in unfortunate or tragic directions. So leaders, you should give some thought to who you want to guide or speak first. Now, when executives need to make a group decision, someone has to act as a facilitator. And this is to provide the framework and guide the group so the group can focus on the choice, not the process. This is at least how high-performing teams do it. The facilitator is there to sense and remove physiological and psychological barriers and even to know when not to intervene because the group is in flow. This means the facilitator needs to be very present and they have a very specific job to do. A facilitator doesn't participate. They're not there to join in the same process as the participants. The facilitator's job is to unlock by asking questions, not to answer. Now, if you choose to act as a facilitator while participating, there are two pitfalls. First, there's a bias that the group gives to your responses because you're also signaling the meeting. You're signaling what comes next, so the group is highly attentive to you. And this can throw off where the group truly believes the solution needs to go because they're gonna give more weight to your comments. And I've seen it happen before, where a CEO who was facilitating chimed in right before an anonymous vote, and the item the CEO brought up became an extra item for the team to work on after the final round of voting, simply because of the weight given to the CEO's comment. Second, the quality of your effort is lower because it's difficult to continually switch back and forth between facilitating, that is empathizing with the group and unlocking their potential, and participating, that is generating vision and strategy and concepts and making decisions. The loss of quality comes from the loss of function because you're bouncing between managing the process in the present and creating. The two actions often require totally different neurochemical profiles. So on the one hand, you should be focused using here and now neuromodulators such as norepinephrine or serotonin, but you may be in a highly dopaminergic state because you are just strategizing about the future or using imagination, which is driven mainly by dopamine. You're going against your own physiology for those of you who think you can handle both. Now, I've mostly used the term facilitator, but you can just as easily insert the term leader. If you're taking on the role of guiding a group, no matter your title, then guide. If you guide or facilitate, you shouldn't participate. It's that simple. And leaders, 75% of you feel like you're not utilizing your creative potential to solve challenges. So if you wanna participate in the solution, or better yet, if you should participate because you have talent that can help, you shouldn't facilitate. There are facilitators out there that can help, and we're one of them. And now that you know this, do me a favor. Go win the day, y'all. Sincerely, your number one sidekick.